Okay, so today I'm going to take you through a couple of interesting use cases for how you can integrate animated packaging mockups with uh, different types of overlay graphics. I've prepared a couple of examples here, and in the first one, we have a lower third graphic overlaid over a presenter who is perhaps introducing some pharmaceutical product. So uh, let me just play this. And we see a lower third animate in. Then we have a 3D bottle, and it settles into its final position. Once again. And we also have this uh, little highlight over here. So I think that's a pretty cool design, and if you ever require a lower third that uh, also introduces a product, then this could be a great approach to up your production values and impress your clients. Then in example number two, we have this lady who is, say, mentioning some new beauty product. And so as she's walking towards the camera, we have this nice overlay animation uh, introducing this product. And then there's a little 360 dance just to show off how pretty it looks. And so let me just play this at full speed. Yeah, so a really nice clip and a great way to introduce a product. Now, for this tutorial, I'm going to focus solely on techniques of adding these uh, animated packaging mockups into these scenes. And so if you want to see how these overlay graphics are built, I'd suggest that you download this After Effects file, and I'll package it up and place it on our free download section so you can pull it apart in your own time and see how all of these elements are built. So now let me close this guy, open up our tutorial comps, and we can start on our lower third shot. As you can see here, we have a lower third clip fully built up, but it's missing the animating product. Uh, so let's see how we go about adding one in. So in my product mockups folder here, I have two mockups already imported. One is a pill bottle and the other is a cream tube. And I simply imported them by going file, import, file, and then selecting my AEP files for each of the mockups. So in this case, I'll be using the pill bottle. And in here, you want to make sure you grab your bottle from this comp. Product comps for use without video templates, meaning you'll be using it in a new comp and not just replacing a placeholder bottle in one of our video templates. So I open up this comp and in here we have three variations of the bottle. There's one where it's lying down, one where it's standing and one where it's floating. In my case, I want to use the standing one, so I go Command-C to copy it, switch back to our lower third comp, and I paste it here using Command-V shortcut. Uh, okay, and so we get this error message here that says we're missing a camera in our scene. So to add one in, I go right-click, New, Camera, and Enter. And that error is gone. Okay, so let's rename this to Bottle. Next, we can rescale it to about, uh, about this size. And let me check that. Uh, yeah, okay, that's looking pretty close. And we'll position it somewhere here. Now, another thing I want to do here, and this is a conscious decision since I know I'll want to animate its scale, is offset its anchor point um, down to about here. And you see, if I change the scale now, it resizes from its base as if it was sitting on the ground and not from its center. Okay, so next we can start animating it. If I check back to my example, I can see that its animation starts around frame 20 and ends around a two second mark. So let's do something similar here. 20 frame mark. I'll trim it and go to my two second mark position, that's P on the keyboard, and set its first keyframe. Then go back here, and I'm going to move my bottle like this. Let's ease it, and I'm going to make sure that it eases with a nice curve over here. Something like that. And then another thing I want to do here is fade it in so that it doesn't just appear out of nowhere. So let's quickly preview this. Okay, so I think the movement is pretty good and we can always tweak it afterwards. And so the next thing is rotation. 
So if I want to animate the rotation of this mockup, I don't animate it here on rotation parameters. But uh, instead, uh, over here in the effects tab, using this angle parameter. Now you see the way it's blue? So that means that it already has some keyframes. I click on it, and that removes any existing keyframes from its angle rotation. Now I'll set this rotation angle to zero, and that straightens out my bottle. Uh, okay, so I want to set a keyframe right here. And you can use the U key to display all animated properties on a layer. And then at the start here, I want it to be rotated something, uh, something like that. Now we should see our bottle rotating. And yeah, so we're going to ease this guy as well, just like we did with its position. And now let's preview it again. All right, and that looks pretty good. Uh, so I think I'm happy with this animation. And so next we can animate that uh, scale effect. So for that, I'm going to follow the timings of the wide bar layer. And so bottle, scale, set one keyframe, set another, set this to, I don't know, maybe 28. And yeah. So next, let's uh, ease them both and set their curve to something like this. Nice. Okay. And so that gives it a resting position where it's uh, a little bit smaller. Okay. So there's one more thing that I want to add here. And as you might have noticed, which is this highlight effect that runs across the bottle right as it comes to a stop. And so there's a couple of ways you can do this, but I want to show you a, a really easy one that uh, might not be as obvious. I simply go new, solid, and we're going to call it uh, highlight. I then shut it off and place under the camera. Let's add a mask. Tilt it like this. And now we can add some motion to the mask. First keyframe and my second keyframe over here. Now let's just tweak their timing a bit. Okay, and I think that should do it. Now, the problem with this highlight is that at the moment, it's just a big white block. And what I want is that it would be only visible on the bottle. So there's a nice trick to achieve that, which is uh, effect, channel, set mat. And for my mat, I'm going to set my bottle layer. And as you can see, it now appears only on my bottle. Uh, all right, so let me just quickly tweak the look of this mask. Set its transfer mode to add to give us that uh, sort of the highlight look and we'll drop its opacity to say like this. All right, and so let's just preview this whole clip now. So there you go, that's our shot done. Uh, this was probably a bit more detailed than I initially intended, but um, but we covered a lot of the basics and learned how to animate a standing bottle that slides in like this. So that's that. And then next, I want to take a look at the second example where we have this lady walking towards the camera. And so I have my comp prepared where I have all of these overlay graphics already in place. And so the only thing that's left to do is to add my animated tube mockup. So in my mockups, I'm going to go tube, product folder. And once again, I open my product comps for use without video templates composition. In here, I find a tube that is floating. And then also I want to grab its shadow. So I make sure I get both of these layers. I copy them, uh, command C. I can close this guy and then I paste them into my comp by just going uh, command V. So once again, we get that camera error and uh, we fix it by adding a camera. Now my tube is too big, so I scale it down, uh, maybe 33. And I'm gonna position it over here. Is that about right? Oh yeah, all good. Now the shadow, you will notice that the shadow is right under the tube. 
as it uh, as it gets automatically aligned with it on its uh, x-axis so meaning that no matter where I move the mock-up the shadow will always follow it uh, which makes it really easy to, to animate things and so that's my tube in place let's uh, rename it also the shadow and the next we can start animating it we'll trim both of these guys over here I'm gonna open its position P set a keyframe and then around here I'll set another one and then I also want another keyframe maybe around here and this is going to be my little bounce so let's drop it lower which will create an overshoot effect giving us uh, that bounce and then here I want the tube to drop in like that and I'm just gonna make sure that these keyframes are linear now this guy is going to be ease in and this is going to be ease ease and I want it to move quickly in the beginning and then slow down as it settles into its uh, into its resting pose and so let's preview this ah, and that tube is rotating by default so let me quickly turn that off and let's preview this again and so as you can see that's already looking quite nice at the moment it just appears out of nowhere so let's fix that I set a keyframe on opacity and set it to zero over here okay much better so next thing I want to do here is uh, give it some additional weight and I'm going to do that by animating its rotation and for now it won't be the 3d rotation but rather a tilt from left to right and for that I can animate this guy I'll create one keyframe here another one over here and another one over here now as it's dropping in I want it to be completely straight and as it hits the ground I want to tilt it and maybe minus 14 and that should give it some nice weight and I'm going to ease these guys And let's see how it looks yeah you see that it's such a subtle movement but it appears so much more natural uh, right away and finally I'm gonna give it some 3d rotations so let me just do this real quick as uh, you've already seen it done before and there it is again very subtle but you can see this change in this highlight which gives it this uh, realistic sort of 3d look okay so that's our tube done and another thing I want to do here is tweak its shadow so T for opacity and let's keep its opacity as it is over here then as the tube drops down we make uh, the shadow more intense and finally here we fade it out let's ease them and okay that's all I needed uh... Okay, so that's our intro done. And the last thing remaining in this shot is that 360 rotation. So let me just quickly check the timings for that. So it starts a little after two seconds, does a full turn just before three, and then bounces back here uh, before four second mark. Okay, so over here, I create a new angle keyframe just before three second mark I add one extra rotation to it uh, meaning it will rotate full 360 degrees and then I copy that keyframe once again over here where I want it to settle to its uh, final position and then here we're going to overshoot this to something like this let's set up all of our easing and tweak these guys like always so it starts slowly overshoots and then slowly comes to its resting position 
and let's take a look at how we've done at it. Oh, that's looking very nice and uh, nice, but again, I feel like it's missing some weight. So uh, let's animate its position. And then here at the start, we're going to give it something known by most animators as an anticipation moment. And it's where the object prepares for its uh, action. So I'll move it lower. And then here, I'm going to move it up a little bit. And then I'm going to copy its final keyframe over here. Let's set up all of the easing and there you go. Such a simple, small thing, but adds so much liveliness to it straight away. And then finally, I'll give it some rotation on its z-axis here as it uh, jumps up and hits that peak, peak sort of moment. And let's just preview the whole clip. Okay, and so there you have it. Um, that's two different scenes with our mockups added and fully animated. Um, as I mentioned, I'll package up this After Effects project so you can download and play around with it. Now, mind you, I'm probably going to have to strip out all the 3D mockups as well as the video backgrounds and replace them with some uh, placeholders. Um, but other than that, everything else should be there. And if you need any 3D mockups, you can find a bunch of them on our asset store uh, over here. So thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something new here today.